Hi, my name is Bianca Bashola. I'm the COO of SIX, and welcome to the B Metals Live Investor Summit. I'd like to start today by introducing our presenters, John Wilton and Derek Iwanaka. To kick things off, John will be telling the company's story, and then we'll be accepting questions. You can submit your questions in the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Now, without further ado, take it away, John. Hi, thanks, Bianca. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our first uh, B Metals webinar. The main purpose of this uh, presentation is to focus a little bit more on the people within our team um, and then a brief update of our uh, recent um, corporate strategy uh, and uh, a brief overview of where we are with our current uh, mineral exploration and development project. So without further ado, let's get into the presentation, forward-looking statement. Uh, and then our first slide about the people. Um, effectively here, we're looking at our board of directors and uh, some of our management team. E Metals was formed about two and a half years ago by Clark Johnson, Tom Garrigan, Roger Richier, and myself. Um, as many of you will know, Clive has, read, uh, Clive has led the team of seasoned professionals through many decades in both Beamer Gold Corporation and B2 Gold returning incredible amount of value to investors and stakeholders in those um, companies. We were very pleased earlier this year when Mark Connolly joined the um, board of the company as non-executive chairman, also bringing a wealth of experience and deal flow specifically in his region in, um, based in being based in Australia. My background is as a geologist um, and on the next slide, we'll be giving um, some more background on the more technical side of the team. Um, since inception of B-Metals, Kristen Reinerson has been our CFO and Corporate Secretary, and she leads a very efficient but small back office staff in line with our company culture of maximizing investors' money into the ground and into the projects um, and keeping our corporate overheads as low as possible. Derek, Derek Iwanaka, who is on the, um, on the conference today, um, also brings a wealth of investor relation experience and input into our corporate development strategies. And in, interestingly enough, Derek also started his career in mining in, <coughs> in about 2002 with Bima Gold Corp. Dennis Sansbury is an important member of our wider team uh, and a very important member of our technical advisory team specifically. Um, Dennis has been responsible for designing and building B2 gold mines across the globe. Um, and Dennis and I spend a lot of time evaluating new projects specifically <clears throat> um, across, across the world, where we've looked at projects in the last years in Europe, Africa, South America, and North America. Before I joined B Metals, I was a regional exploration manager for Antofagasta PLC, the large Chilean copper producer. And our go-to external consultant was uh, Dr. Richard Salito, based in London. Um, Dick and I have published some um, research work on the Zambian copper belt specifically with other colleagues from Antofagasta. And we were very pleased that Dick agreed to join us on the advisory team of B Metals at the start of the company some two and a half years ago. Uh, Dick is truly a world-renowned economic geologist and what I like about his work specifically is that research work is often observational based um, and he's already provided exceptional value and deal flow into the company. Some of our competitive advantages over probably over our peer group is that because of the track record of some of the senior members of the uh, board, we have um, extensive deal, deal flow across the world in both gold and base metal projects and the ability to write checks when required for projects and equity financing. So a little bit more about the um, technical background to some of the uh, people in our team. My background really started um, as an exploration geologist with a South African company called Anglevol Mining back in 1990, when I lived and worked in South Africa, subsequently lived and worked in Zambia and uh, Namibia. Um, the sort of relationship with the B2 team came about in that I was fortunate enough in the late 1990s to be a senior member of the discovery team of what has become now the Ochicotto Gold Mine in Namibia. Now that deposit was put into production by B2 Gold and it's currently a very successful operation in the B2 Gold stable. 
The picture you can see there on the left is a picture of the collar of uh, drill hole uh, OT3, third hole drilled on the property in about 1999. Um, and that was really our first intersection that we thought could be an indication of economic mineralization at that point in time. Bearing in mind <coughs> the backdrop to, um, to gold at that point <coughs> was that um, you know, the gold price was rapidly disappearing under $300 an ounce. Um, but one of my good friends and colleagues at that time, Anton Lombard and I, really took this project under our wing um, and managed to convince investors and the board of the company at that time that this was really truly a valuable asset. And over about a 10 year period, uh, we managed to build a resource base on that, on that property from those initial boreholes to around 2 million ounces. At that time, the, the project was, um, was sold to a company called Oryx Gold Corp, who did more drilling and studies on the property. And then subsequent to that, Tom Garrigan of B2 Gold um, became aware of the project, realized the value in that property, um, and took it into the B2 Gold stable. And B2 did an excellent job in very quickly building and um, exploiting the deposit. Many of you might know Tom Garrigan's um, discovery record, which is truly very impressive. Um, and something like 30 million ounces of gold under his management has been, um, has been discovered. One of the sort of flagship discoveries in that time would be the Kupol discovery in Far East Russia that Tom and his team did in a time when Far East Russia was a challenging environment to work. Subsequent to that, he has now taken on the uh, Pakola deposit in, uh, in Mali and really added significant amount of resources to that. And B2 have now developed a real true world-class mine on that project in, in Mali. So those are important cultures I think we take across um, and have merged quite nicely in B metals. And this slide probably sums up, uh, if we had to present B metals in one slide, this is probably the one we would use. And it really shows very nicely the value creation in both Bima Gold Corporation, now B2 Gold, and we see that B Metals is the next step in that stable and cycle of value creation for investors in the mineral exploration, development, and mining, ultimately mining business. Uh, Derek, if you would like to take us through a snapshot of our corporate overview at this point in time. Sure, thanks, John. Uh, so I'll just highlight a few of the numbers here. Um, number one would probably be the shares outstanding, 124 million uh, shares outstanding as of today. Of that uh, 124 million, uh, over 25% or a quarter of the company is basically owned by the founding group. So that'd be Clive Johnson, who owns around 80% of the company, uh, Tom Garrigan, John, myself, and, and others on the board and in the management team. So uh, founders definitely believe in having skin in the game, and we do. And uh, I think we've now purchased about 32 million shares, either on the open market or through private placements. Um, I also like to point out that out of that retail section in the pie chart there, there's 56% is held by retail shareholders. And I would say over half of that is probably held by either friends or family of, of our uh, founding group. So what is nice is you don't tend to see a huge amount of selling in our stock. Uh, I would say that the only downside would be that sometimes the volume is not as high as we'd like to see, but um, that seems to be improving and we are doing some more marketing. We're, this is our first webinar. So hopefully things like this help uh, generate some more volume on the stock. And we're, we're still trading about 132,000 shares uh, on a daily basis. Uh, one other thing I just point out, our market cap is about $55 billion and our cash position is pretty good. I think, after we closed our last financing in August, we had about $7.7 .7 million. So we're well financed uh, to deliver our catalyst for this year. Back to you, John. So in about March or April of this year, uh, we made a board level decision to expand our sort of um, search criteria and corporate strategy to include uh, precious metals to complement our current uh, base metal project. So since that time, uh, bearing in mind we are now in this uh, current uh, sort of COVID world, if you want to call it that, um, we have been reviewing um, a huge number of projects from our deal flow. We've probably looked um, at a, in a significant way at the desktop level about 40 projects uh, during that time. 
Um, and we've been able to get boots on the ground on a number of projects that we that we like the look of through um, our extensive network with people that we really trust in some of the regions. Um, and myself and Dennis have been able to get to certain projects in North America. Very recently, we're down in the US looking at potential um, gold opportunities. Uh, we see that's a critical, critical part of assessing projects. So that work is ongoing. I think we're getting close to identifying some really good projects, but we have to be patient um, and we're not prepared to jump into a project just to get precious metals as a, as a standalone on our, in our inventory. We're looking for those real quality acquisitions that can really add value um, in line with, um, with what, the, what the team has done in past years through BEMA and B2. In addition to that gold strategy that we recently added to the uh, corporate picture, we continue to advance our uh, more advanced South Mountain project in Idaho, USA, that relates to a high-grade polymetallic deposit that we've got underground, existing underground um, development into, and we'll talk more about that in the next slide. Interestingly enough, that project also has a significant precious metal component in both uh, gold and silver. Um, the project that we really founded B Metals on was a former um, copper exploration property of mine in, um, in northwest and Zambia called the Pengeni Copper Project. That's at a relatively earlier stage, but we're getting some very encouraging drilling results we'll talk about at the end of the presentation. And the advantage of that project is it really does have, if successful, the potential to deliver a true world-class discovery because of the pedigree of that belt. And you'll see the, um, the competitors that are working in that region. So just to took a very much a summary form, this uh, slide was taken um, a couple of weeks ago underground at uh, South Mountain in Idaho. We've reclassified this deposit geologically following input from uh, Dr. Richard Salito. Previously, it was uh, seen to be more of a scone type deposit. Um, high grade, but uh, potentially could have been a bit erratic. But the reality is that we've now identified that this is really should be called a carbonate replacement deposit. That sort of sounds like a little bit of uh, geological semantics, but the importance is other carbonate replacement deposits, CRDs as they're known, um, really do have scope to become significant tonnage deposits and maintain their high grade nature. This image is a picture of uh, what we call Muck Bay 5 where we did a significant amount of drilling last year, and we have been drilling until um, earlier this, this week. So a couple of the factors that really got us interested in this project was that um, at inception, there is an existing modest tonnage, but high grade resource at about uh, the 10% uh, zinc level with significant um, silver, uh, gold, and certain areas with um, a significant copper component also. We believe there's really excellent potential to grow this resource to a critical mass where we can start a, um, an initial mining operation and generate cash flow in the uh, coming years. The capital cost for such an operation will be relatively modest um, and, the, and the property is on patented or private land and a majority of the permits are in place that could lead to a construction decision um, subject to um, obviously the correct um, DEA and uh, feasibility studies. The way we structured the deal with a company called um, Thunder Mountain Gold, uh, a long established Idaho based um, mining and exploration company, has really been an advantage. They're the option ease of this property. And we've brought on the senior members of their management team to form part of our project group. That's led to us being able to really build on their well established network, both in uh, Boise, Idaho. Um, and in and around the project site. And that um, relationship has really developed very nicely and the project team are really delivering uh, in some challenging circumstances, including the current COVID challenges uh, in Idaho and that site. So just the main sort of drivers and catalysts from that project, we're currently in the middle of an underground drilling uh, campaign at this point in time. Um, we're currently finishing up some drilling on the DMEA zone, and then we'll be moving across to the Texas zone in the southeastern part of the property, where historically there's been more of a um, copper component to the mineralization. 
So upon trying to extend the resource in that area, we will conduct other studies. Probably early next year, we will be doing a significant amount of more metallurgical test work. Although there is some historical metallurgical test work that shows there are good results in recoveries of the zinc um, and precious metals into that um, into the concentrate. And we expect to start seeing uh, news flow coming out of our current drilling results um, by December this year. Uh, I was I was on the project for a couple of weeks uh, just um, very recently down in Idaho, um, and visual visual results so far look uh, very encouraging. Subsequent to that, early next year we'll be building that uh, revised resource estimate and plugging that in ultimately to a PEA study. Um, and to determine whether to move into a pre-feasibility or feasibility study, or potentially even into a construction stage um, situation, pending results of the metallurgical test work and ultimately the results of that uh, PEA study. We've engaged Port, <coughs> Port Longyear doing the underground drilling at this point in time. Uh, we're getting very good production from that drilling, and uh, our general team has done a very good job in managing that um, and uh, tracing the mineralization down plunge on the uh, project. Just a very brief overview now on our exploration activities um, in the Zambian copper belt. This is an image uh, taken last year of our core drilling um, at one of the prospects on the Pengeli project. Gives you a sense for the um, nature of the bush in that area. Actually quite a pristine area and our exploration activities uh, undertaken in an in environmentally sensitive way, where we're trying not to uh, disturb any indigenous um, trees, etc., and rehabilitation of our drill sites are done in, on an ongoing manner. To give you a sense where the, uh, the setting of this project, the start area there is the Tangeni Copper Project, out in the northwestern part of Zambia. And the thesis of the exploration here is really very similar to the exploration discovery I was involved in um, of the Ochicotto deposit in the late 90s. The Ochicotto deposit would have been found uh, 100 years ago by uh, prospectors in Namibia if it wasn't for the fact it was completely concealed under a thin veneer of calcrete cover in the order of 10 to 20 meters thick. So we did some um, geophysical, specifically magnetics and uh, EM investigations of that project and then use shallow drilling to get through that calcrete cover, return information on bedrock geology and geochemistry, followed up with core drilling, and that led to the discovery of the Ochikoto deposit. In this part of northwestern Zambia, we don't have calcrete cover, but we do have extensive areas of Kalahari sand cover, so an old desert environment um, that's concealing, again, the bedrock, um, and it makes the use of conventional soil geochemistry and even more sophisticated soil geochemistry um, untenable. So what we're doing in this part of the world is now using um, very efficient, cost-effective air core drilling to punch holes through geophysically driven targets and recover information on bedrock geology and geochemistry. I kept very close to this project from my days uh, with Antofagasta because I realized that the cover thickness here was modest in the order of 10 to 25, maybe up to 30 meters thickness on average on the property. So very amenable to still, if you find a deposit, open pit mining method. Um, a number of major mining companies are exploring for sediment hosted copper deposits, um, similar to those that we see in the uh, Central African Copper Belt, including Anglo-American with a very large land position to the west of us, where actually the sand cover does thicken considerably to more 100 and 150 meter type thicknesses. Uh, Rio Tinto have got a number of active exploration properties busy with, uh, they're busy with at the moment in Zambia. And First Quantum and Beric with, um, you know, significant copper mines, specifically in First Quantum's case, the Constanchi copper mine, which is truly a world class deposit, and the Sentinel copper mine, some 100, 130 kilometers as the crow flies from where we are. One thing that's motivating those companies and others like ourselves has been the fantastic work that Ivan have done in the DRC in part of the same geological system of the Central African Copper Belt, where they have discovered and are in the process of developing the Kamoa discovery in uh, the western part of the Copper Belt in, um, in the DRC. 
So this slide sort of just an overview of the sort of methods that we use to explore this part of the world. Um, a land cruiser based uh, air core rig, very efficient, very maneuverable, so it doesn't need a huge amount of road construction. Punch holes through that um, shallow sand uh, cover, cover areas, get ourselves bedrock geology and geochemistry, and then follow up with um, core drilling. So last year we had a very successful phase of core drilling. You can see some of the results there, meaningful true width intersections in the five meter range, running at about 0.5% copper. And importantly, that copper mineralization, which is generally hosted as chalcopyrite, although we have seen higher tenor bornite also in some of these intersections, associated with an alteration mineral called kyanite. That's important to those of us who are geologists and explorers because that same um, geological alteration um, assemblage is in the nearby sentinel deposits where that chalcopyrite is associated with the mineral kyanite. So really exciting um, relationships and uh, early stage results coming out of that uh, project in northwestern Zambia. We did drill some uh, narrower but higher grade tenor mineralization, all related to an increase in the percentage of chalcopyrite, both in veins and disseminated, and in some instances a component of higher tenor bornite coming into that mineralization, which might give us a sense that we're getting close to the potential feeder structures of some of those individual prospects. So as we speak, we're about 2,000 meters into a 3,500 meter air core program in Zambia at this point in time. We have been looking to expand out from the known mineralization that we've now intersected last year, and also test some other high priority targets on this property. Those results are going, are going very well and look, look encouraging at this point in time. And we'll start to report on those again by year end and early, early next year. So in summary, and really the sort of value proposition that we present to potential investors in B-Metals, that the company is truly led and guided by a team of top mine finders, builders and operators as testament to the um, value creation that's been done through Bima Gold and B2 Gold over many decades. We get exposed because of those relationships to extensive deal flow. Um, and that will help us both in the search for the precious metal projects, which is a priority for us at this point in time, and potential other mineral opportunities that may come our way in the coming years. Access to capital, as Derek mentioned earlier, we, we um, close our first uh, brokered private placement uh, in August this year uh, of 7.5 million Canadian. But possibly more importantly uh, was fundraising that we did prior to that when markets weren't as buoyant in the mining exploration sector as they, as they currently are. Um, we're looking now to expand our portfolio and add precious metals into the um, portfolio of our strategy and projects as we go forward. Uh, complementing our high-grade uh, South Mountain polymetallic deposits and the potential that we have to discover truly world-class deposits on the uh, Pengeni property out in northwestern Zambia. So we're fully financed at this point in time to um, identify and secure that entry-level quality uh, precious metal project, expand and update the uh, resource base and complete a PEA study at South Mountain in Idaho, and also complete the current uh, ongoing air core and diamond drilling on the Pengeni project out in northwestern Zambia with that real potential to, to, intercept, to discover a world-class deposit. That kind of sums up an overview and hopefully is giving you a little bit more background on the, um, on the technical team that's involved in the metals. Um, and in future webinars, we'll be expanding that to give more detail on the current projects. Um, and update investors, hopefully, on our search for precious metal projects um, as, as the company evolves. Well, thank you for your time in, in listening to this, and um, we're very happy um, soon to do a question and answer session. If, um, if people have questions, we'll, we'll do our best to answer those. Thank you very much, John. Just confirming you both can still hear me? I can. Wonderful. Let's get this Q&A started. So as a reminder to everyone watching, you can submit your questions in the Q&A panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, let's start with this one from uh, Tom. 
He says, uh, good strategy with your stable of jurisdictions. Um, one, in relation to B2 Gold, how much does the company itself own of B Metals? That's an excellent question hmm. uh, and something we normally touch on in our presentations. There actually is no cross shareholding between um, B2 Gold and B Metals, where we are truly a standalone company, but we do uh, benefit from um, some of the similar core investors um, that have backed uh, Beamer and B2 actually um, from their inception. Uh, and obviously we have um, common directors and senior managers of B2 that are directors and um, part of our wider team at, uh, at uh, B Metal. Perfect. Uh, second question, also from Tom, uh, and sorry if I, I butchered this, this name here. Uh, Dick Siloto uh, is, of course, impressive. Has he been uh, to Pangini in person? Um, Dick actually hasn't been to the Pangeni project. Um, the main reason for that is that the Pangeni project itself is, um, by its nature, very much um, sand covered. So there's, there's basically no um, outcropping geology to, um, to see on that property. Um, but we have certainly discussed and looked at the, um, the core results uh, and technical results coming out of that project. Um, Dick has, has added real value for us, specifically at uh, South Mountain in Idaho. You know, he's been out <coughs> right now. And in fact, in May, we, would, um, we were planning another visit, but unfortunately, COVID uh, put pay for that one. Um, and we keep up to date. Um, I'm probably in daily daily uh, communications uh, with uh, Dr. Salito and keeping him up to date on how our projects are, are progressing technically. Very good. And final question from Tom. He says, uh, your search for a third advanced stage project, uh, gold, copper, silver, zinc, Africa, Canada, USA, USA a filed recent resource, bunch of, <laughs> bunch of options, bunch of questions. So what's your other question there? Well, the main thing is that that next project uh, will will be focused on uh, precious metals, specifically gold. Um, and you know, in line with um, with the guidance from our board and our experience base, we're not uh, constrained by geography. Um, I guess the current COVID situation has changed that a little bit, and it's difficult to get to certain projects at this point in time from a travel point of view. Um, but I'm doing this uh, webinar at the moment from uh, my second stage of quarantine here in um, in Vancouver um, and I can see many more quarantines coming my way in the, in the near future um, but the important thing is we're trying to get boots on ground on the project um, ideally in the gold space what we're looking for is a project that has a, an existing resource base a bit like South Mountain that may be a little bit on the modest side but the important thing is that we will have to see really good exploration upside um, that's where we add our value as a company so take a resource base, something we think is very close to being economic and something we could get potentially quickly into production and then drill and expand that resource base to give the investors that uplift from actually doing our job, which is, uh, which is finding, expanding, and exploiting um, gold resources. Nice. Moving on to our, our next uh, attendee here, Ken is asking, Please provide an update on the current and or upcoming mining regimen in Zambia, along with your and the industry's views on this. Yeah, I've been involved in um, exploration and, and mining projects in Zambia for probably 15 years or so now. So it would be true to say that we have seen um, some changes over the years, uh, specifically related to, um, to royalties, uh, state royalties on mining taxation. That's gone both ways, um, and the Zambian government has tried um, various various di different routes with increasing royalties and removing corporate taxation, for example. Fact remains that um, Zambia, in my experience, and with a number of other the major companies that are currently exploring there, such as Anglo American, Rio Tinto, uh, First Quantum, is that if you find a deposit in Zambia, you will be able to put that into production, and in fact, the government will be very supportive in in bringing New, new mines into production. We have some um, advantages in the way we've structured that project in that we have a small um, private Zambian company who are actually the uh, license holders of that project. I've been involved with them now for, um, for more than um, seven years. And um, you know, that also helps us in relationships with, uh, with the authorities 
in Zambia. My relationship with the with the Ministry of Mines and, and others in Zambia has always been very positive. If you're clear and transparent and honest about the uh, work that you're doing and the investment, um, you know, I see no obstacles to um, to developing uh, ultimately copper copper discoveries in, in the country. Great. Uh, next one comes from Michael Chung. He says, uh, can you talk a bit about the existing mill slash concentrate at the Idaho project? Uh, is it privately owned and how close by is it? So at this, at this point in time, our relationship with the um, Idaho property is through, um, is through um, an earning option agreement uh, from the uh, auctionees Thunder Mountain Gold. Um, there was um, there was an attempt to um, to mine this project uh, some years ago, but the uh, joint venture partner on, of Thunder Mountain at that time had or ran into financial problems before they even got close to exploiting that. There might be some um, mining um, equipment uh, that was designed for the project. But quite frankly, we would need to complete our own studies and see that that was uh, fit for purpose. And it's not currently part of the uh, deal structure that we, we have in place. Sometimes you might need to go and redesign and, and start with new equipment to efficiently exploit the deposit. Question comes in from George Petker. He says, are you able to extract bulk tonnage from the Idaho polymetallic? And if so, how much per year? Um, we would be looking to start with a relatively modest tonnage at this point. Um, you know, our sort of our sort of internal studies would suggest that we might be producing in the order of twenty five thousand tons of zinc in concentrate, um, and that would come with the associated uh, precious metals and and potentially copper. There's been the least amount of um, historical test work, metallurgical test work, been done on the potential of the copper component. So that will be one of our focuses for for test work early next year. We'll be looking at the opportunity uh, and doing various trade-off studies in um, you know, the opportunity to possibly separate the uh, chalcopyrite. I mean, that's an important fact that um, all the, most of the copper mineral is, is again chalcopyrite, a very conventional copper sulfide and easy to deal with. Um, so that's, that's where we stand with that at this point in time. This is another one from Michael Chung. He asks, will you be looking to acquire more copper assets in the future? I think that put, that potentially exists, but once we've got a um, precious metal under our belt, that will be our focus for a specific point in time. However, in line with the strategies that have been successfully deployed at both BEMA and B2, this is um, almost a never ending process. So we will always be out there looking for the next phase the next uh, value adding uh, projects um, and that could um, that could be more uh, precious metal projects or it could be copper gold projects or gold copper projects we'll just have to see um, at the end of the day which 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 projects come up um, that really add value to to investors and shareholders and as the company gets gets traction uh, and we start to to evolve into a producer you know, we can look at a number of opportunities then in possibly separating base metals from precious metals, for example. But at this early stage, we can really add value and incubate uh, both precious metal and base metal projects within the current uh, B metals uh, portfolio. On the vein of acquisition, there's another question here about uh, if there be any possibility uh, of acquiring a uranium project in the future. How does mm -hmm. that fit into your investment thesis? Yeah, good question. Um, I think at this point in time, that would probably be unlikely. Um, you know, that's a sort of another sort of more of a specialist field. Um, you know, there is a there is always experience in our team on pretty much every commodity, actually. Um, and um, but at this point, we would we would probably not be really looking to get involved in uh, uranium. Moving back to uh, Idaho for a moment here. Robert Radway asks, how near is, to an Integris project in southern Idaho is your South Man Mountain project? Um, pretty near. We can, we can basically see their project from across the other side of the valley. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we are a project team there. We've uh, put in our own project manager, a guy called Rocky Chase. Um, and he has a good relationship with the Integra guys. Um, and there's been a good cooperation between 
between the project teams, certainly um, dealing with some of the um, COVID uh, situations and policies. Uh, there's a small community at a, at, a, at a little village called Jordan Valley. Um, and, um, you know, there's good cooperation there um, between, the, um, between the two um, project teams. Since we're on the, uh, the topic of South Mountain, what is the biggest, or where is the biggest exploration upside potential at the South Mountain property, in your view? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, in, the, in the short term, um, what's gonna be really exciting as from probably the end of this week or this weekend, we will start drilling on the, what's called the Texas zone, which is in the southeastern part of the, um, of the project. That's an area that has had uh, significant uh, copper credit in the past. And we actually put out a news release um, about a month ago that showed some underground sampling data there from the um, 1980s that also showed there was a significant gold component to that uh, zinc copper mineralization. So in the near term drivers, that will be an important, um, important part of the project. Also, you know, the results that we, we, we recovered last year was that we showed that we can trace these high-grade bodies down time. So there will always be um, scope to keep uh, testing and expanding the resource down plunge. There are a number of other targets from the existing underground development that we haven't even touched uh, at this point in time. And then in the more medium term, there's a whole, a whole area that we call the sort of northern limb, which has the same... Um, surface expressions of mineralization in terms of high-grade um, silver mineralization. Some of these uh, patented claims were first pegged in uh, 1904. And the prospectors at that time identified the value by looking at high-grade silver mineralization at cropping on surface. And there's a whole limb that uh, has had no um, drilling. And from what we're learning increasingly about the geology of the system, it would be sort of surprising if there wasn't more polymetallic mineralization underneath those um, currently untested areas. Um, so that will be sort of a, a medium term target for us. But if they came off, that could really start um, magnifying the potential of the project. And we know from a geological sense, these carbonate replacement deposits can evolve into significant deposits. Another question here uh, from George Pecker. He's asking, uh, is there a possibility of seeing copper cash flow in 2021? And if so, is that an M&A opportunity? Uh, from our project specifically, I would say that there isn't really, we, we wouldn't be able to get the cash flow on, on our copper projects, uh, either the copper component, component to South Mountain or obviously the exploration stage Pangeni project. But copper is something that I'm personally quite keen that we keep to a degree in our portfolio because, you know, the fundamentals of copper, um, as countries start to come out of the, um, the COVID situation and looking to build infrastructure projects to re-stimulate the economies, uh, copper, and because of the importance of copper for, um, for green energy, um, the UK, for example, is now, has now said it wants to be really aggressive in getting um, renewable energy that will have a huge impact on uh, on the demand for copper going forward. Speaking of COVID, since this wouldn't be a panel in, in 2020 if I didn't ask you about COVID-19, uh, so could you just shed some light on how COVID has affected your operations? Yeah, we've been pretty fortunate in that regard, and this was really not, not by design because I don't think anyone saw COVID coming um, earlier this year, but the fact that we've got um, project teams in the regions anyway um, means that we're not flying people around from uh, from Vancouver, for example, um, to the projects. So the difficulties around that um, has been uh, dissipated. Obviously, we put into place um, some strict uh, COVID policies and protocols for those project teams. But having our South Mountain team based effectively in Boise, Idaho, and staying up at uh, near Jordan Valley. We've just rented a very nice um, a ranch, which is four miles from Jordan Valley, the perfect place to put geologists. And I'm sure they'll do a lot of great work and have quite a bit of fun there as well. Um, and out in Zambia, um, our project uh, has always been run in the field by a group uh, based out of Cape Town in South Africa called RES. Um, and they have project teams in country for other, other, other major mining companies. And they're currently on site for us. So, 
that and having our, our friends from Bengeni Mineral Resources based in Lusaka means we're well established and independent in the region. Um, and, you know, I, um, I basically take the punch and get out to the project um, and just have to do the um, associated quarantine um, that comes with that. Another question around Zambia, this one comes from Al. He asks, how do you find Zambia's political environment? Uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, you know, having been involved in um, in Zambia for a, from a for a long long period of time, um, you know, Zambia is one of Africa's longest serving um, democracies uh, since since independence in the sixties from the uh, UK, one of the um, first countries to get its independence. Um, it's been in general very very stable jurisdiction. The transition of power between the political groups has always been peaceful. Um, and most importantly, at a grassroots level, the, the Zambian people are very, very welcoming. Certainly, um, you know, in and around Lusaka, and even more so, possibly, out in the regions and the projects. Um, and we've learned over the years um, how to how to integrate and um, do the right things in the community. Uh, a lot of that comes from at an early stage projects like ourselves. Comes from employing local staff to help with our help with our projects and field activities and bringing in elements of uh, training into that so that when we come back for the next field season we identify the same people who've already developed skills in using gps for example sampling protocols the chain of custody that comes with that um, and it's been a really good env environment uh, to work in in zambia over over many decades now very good uh, switching gears for a moment to talk about this new potential goal project what criteria are you using to identify which project to pursue and, and uh, what scale and size or jurisdiction are you looking for? I know we kind of mentioned this earlier, but I am curious to hear more about the, that criteria, especially for some of the individuals who have been joining us uh, later in the Q&A period. Sure. I mean, uh, as, as, as people will probably understand in that the assessment of, um, of any mining opportunity, exploration opportunity is always on a case by case basis, really. Um, but we're really looking to get ourselves what we call our entry level project. Um, and realistically, we'd be looking for a project that has the potential to, to ultimately produce in the region of 80 to 100 as an ounce of gold per annum. Um, so if you back calculate that, you, you sort of come up with, um, with some magic numbers that's, that's been, been in my mind since I started my uh, career in the, in the mining business that always leads you close to a million ounce number that you would like to see because you would like to have at least that production for 10 years. Um, but obviously we, are, we can be flexible um, and part of the experience in the team is that we can take projects that are possibly earlier stage exploration, um, but then also really work on building resource bases, um, possibly ones that have a existing resource base that we could exploit quickly and then rely on the fact that we would discover uh, extensions to that or satellite deposits to that initial resource base. <clears throat> awesome. Um, I have uh, one more question that I want to go over. I, I guess it, broadening it to the team here, um, obviously we've talked about your expertise. Uh, I would love to know uh, how much money has your founding team invested of your own money into uh, B-Metals? I can answer that one. Um, so I think uh, between private placements and, and open market buying, uh, it's, it's probably close to $2.8 million. I mean, a larger part of that is going to be uh, is Clive. But uh, there were, I mean, John and myself, uh, the rest of the management team, we've, we've all pitched in our, ourselves. And uh, uh, so I think it's about $2.8 million. Awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, I just see that we had one more question coming uh, right under the wire here. Do you have time for just uh, one more? It's kind of a big one, to be fair. But it's a big one. It's a big <laughs> okay, one. I'll, sure. I'll break it down if it's cool. Okay. All right. This one actually comes from Smith Weekly Research. Uh, they want to know who was the major shareholder that came in under the last capital raise? Uh, let's start there before I move on to the next part of the question. So who was that major shareholder? Uh I think at this point we're we're not able to say um, it's an institutional investor, but uh, they haven't been named as of yet. 
perfect. How long will that capital last if there are no moves on M&A? And if there is M&A, will there be a concurrent capital raise? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we're well funded at this point in time that would uh, certainly take us um, well through into, um, into the uh, first half of, of next year. Depending on how the um, how the projects perform and what what uh, you know, if you want to be a bit more aggressive on on some of the of the um, projects, we're looking at some more initiative ways on getting funding for some of the projects that we we have in uh, in play at the moment, which may pan out in the next uh, in the next few months. Um, and when we find the right um, precious metal project, it is there is a good chance that um, we would then. Uh, look to do another capital raising specifically for funding to take that uh, project forward. Wonderful. All right, folks, with that, that brings us to the end of our Q&A period. I want to thank each and every one of you who, uh, who attended today. Uh, if you had a question but you were not able to ask it for whatever reason or you just thought of one right now, it's awesome, uh, feel <laughs> free to send it off to BMELS directly. You can see I just put up their contact information on the screen uh, and they would be more than happy to answer it. Uh, again, a big thank you uh, to, to you two, uh, John, Derek, Really great having you. I will pass it back to you, John, for the final word. You know, thank you very much, Bianca. We've uh, we've enjoyed that first uh, webinar, and uh, you know, keep watching the space, and we'll be we'll be looking to do some uh, some other updates uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months with a uh, with a bit more emphasis, possibly on the um, on the technical side of the project next time, um, and hopefully soon um, a, a lot more on the. Um, on our corporate strategy and uh, successful acquisition of a, of a precious metal project. Thank you, everybody.